I feel like I say this a lot with crane design, but in all my years doing this, I've never seen anything like this. Hey everybody, welcome to Bish's RV. I've got one that I'm really enjoying today. This is the 3210BH uh, Grand Design Imagine. Brand new floor plan, finally getting a full look at this thing here. I'd only seen a prototype preview before. <clears throat> this, this is a beast. Uh, they, they, they rewrote the rules on what a bunkhouse has to be or could be because bunkhouses suffer commonly from a fundamental problem. You can sleep more people than you can accommodate in your seating situation, and this one destroys that problem. First of all, over here on the door side of the RV, you have this big super slide giving you awesome window coverage to enjoy your campsite, but they put in a like, oh, double up theater seat. Like they, they doubled up the, the heat massage theater seating. So you have quadruple heat massage theater recliners over there on the door side of the RV, but it's individual seats. So if you wanted to swap one out for a desk or a dog kennel or something like that, you totally could. On the opposite side is a kitchen and dining and entertainment. They smash three things together over there in this crazy fusion that like it shouldn't work, but it does. It's like as crazy Franken camper. Then on the back side of it, they gave it a true quad bunk with a cargo door that you could load stuff into for transit, like e-bikes or anything like that, if need be. Um, not to mention all the kids' yard toys and stuff like that. You know, so uh, I always bring stuff, you know, the bag toss games, your cornhole, all that stuff. Um, the top bunks flip up out of the way. So if it's a rainy day and everyone's stuck inside, not only do you have seating for eight in the living room, you've also got a couple lounge spaces in that private rear room. It is just a crazy cool flexible model. Now, everything that I just described does require decently long RV. So they went with a walkthrough middle bath up front. That could result in the RV being cut off if somebody's using the bathroom, but they included a second door to kind of overcome that. And they included dual awnings so that you didn't have to lose so much of your awning space by putting one big awning over the super slide. It even covers the camp kitchen now. Like, this thing is different. It is crazy. It is cool. I'm liking it, but I tend to gravitate towards stuff that's just not the same, same every single day. I'd love to hear from you. What do you think? What do you like? What would you change given the opportunity? And this thing here, it's it's a big animal. It's different from nearly anything else I've ever seen. And I wasn't really sure where to start. So I thought, you know what? When in doubt, how would, how would you, how would a customer see this? If you came in to visit our store, if you walked in the door, this is kind of like the first main thing you're gonna see right here. You know the first thing I thought of when I saw this? Diesel pusher. This reminds me a lot of how big motorhomes will handle opposing slides uh, where your entertainment will sometimes it's a televator sometimes it's a tv above but the dining and the entertainment kind of being one thing here now one of the questions that i had is um how easy is it to see the entertainment center from all of the door side super slide seating so first of all just to kind of finish uh the uh, the layout here so that you know what we're talking about i'm going to do the butt scoot boogie and hop between each of those uh chairs in the sofa so that you can see what the entertainment center looks like. Now, naturally, this is a little bit easier when there's nobody in the RV. But from the very right-hand theater seat, that's pretty awesome. I think you're gonna make it rain pretty clearly on seats number two and three. Seat number two definitely does appear to be about the best seat in the house. We're going to see in a little bit, though, that TV can um, pivot, which is kind of nice. And I, I just about slipped and fell in the back of it. Why is my butt vibrating? Oh, the, this is heat massage, uh, seating. And I couldn't figure out why my butt was vibrating for a second there. The chair that I was the least, um, sure about, I guess you could say was over here all the way on the left. So this is the chair directly in front of the Island. And Maybe I'm tall. I am trying to do my best to give you uh, your point of view. Like I'm not using tricky fisheye camera ends uh, angles or anything like that. I think it passes the test. Now, if you got a couple people sitting at the dinette and that space is occupied a little bit, yeah, I could see that being a little trickier. That's going to be something that you're going to have to consider and budget. The kitchen on this, like this is a this is a monstrously good living room and entertainment focused big bunkhouse. The kitchen, something had to give. It was the kitchen because this little kind of coffee bar over here, it had to be split apart from the primary kitchen, which is over there. 
Now that is the more unconventional part of the kitchen in this floor plan. They did have to kind of break it up a little bit. I do really like all the windows over here on the campsite though, really giving you an awesome view of your uh, destination. The ceiling is vaulted because this is Big Papa, imagine. This is their, their highest end line, basically. That is one of the differentiating factors that you'll see right there. We're gonna come back in the kitchen. There's decent storage. It is just limited prep space in that little corner. And again, something else to consider. If you're going bacon grease crazy, there's that little bit of countertop space between you and the dinette, but um, don't be surprised if you get a little grease splatter on the back of your neck over there from the bacon. So kind of keep that in mind. What is cool about this though, it's a true quad bunk. It is a four individual bunk back here in this private room. And uh, very similar to say like Rockwood or Jayco, they're using the thicker bunk mattresses. And you can see they're very good about giving windows and lights uh, for every single uh, bunk, not to mention how you've got that, uh, that, that, I don't even want to call it Cyclops window, just bonus rear wall window, making a no slide rear bunk room look and feel bigger. And of course, this has the move bunk, get out the way feature right there. Now, unlike the 25 BHE, which has a very similar bunk room where you've got quad bunks and a, uh, a cargo door in the back, this one, only that one single bunk flips up. In this floor plan, that bunk over there is fixed and it does not get out the way. Now back here in the bunk room, I got my uh, my butt all the way against the rear wall. I got my butt on the butt of the camper. It is a simple little blade fan back here for some extra airflow. You may have noticed how every window back here opens for uh, air, which is really nice, especially if you got, you know, teenagers, which... They start stinking and they 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 just don't know it. Like they're they're nose blind to that kind of thing, man. Um, you uh, we we kind of saw it from the other direction. You know, if you're walking out of the bunks in the morning, this is what you're looking at right here. It feels like uh like kind of blocked up on this end of the RV, but again, that's because this was built with the idea of a big, wide open uh, living room space. And you know what? We're gonna come back and open like all the storage and stuff in a minute. I wanna just keep rolling through the rest of the floor plan for now. This might be a deal breaker for folks. This is a walkthrough middle bathroom, uh, which means that, you know, somebody showering or using the toilet, the camper's cut off. You do have a second entry door in the bedroom to help combat that. The idea behind this bathroom is this style of bathroom actually makes the RV shorter and lighter, which on a very large floor plan like this is extremely beneficial as opposed to a private walk around bedroom um, or bathroom rather. Uh, and, and it makes the room itself actually larger once you close those dual sliding privacy doors. But this jelly ain't everybody's jam. I get that. That's why we carry different RVs here at Bish's RV. Now, that is a true queen bed up here in this private bedroom. And, um, you know, the bedroom in this is very rank and file for the Imagine family. They didn't, you know, they didn't need to reinvent the wheel because, frankly, I think they do an extremely nice bedroom. One of the options that you have in this is the second air conditioner uh, up top. This is uh, the Imagines whose model numbers are 28 and larger, with this being 3210, uh, means that you can apply the... Um, uh, second air option here. Now, it's interesting to me that they put household outlets down here almost at ground level. Maybe that's for like a standing fan because if you uh, look in those little nooks over there, I call those the headboard power pockets, you see how those do have that handy, um, uh, you know, household outlet and USB outlet function within them. Now, there's storage above, below, dresser drawers, beside, storage all over the place in this bedroom. Uh, and under the bed, there's an extra little tray that slides back and forth, or you can just straight pull it out of there if you don't want it in the way. If you got big bulky cargo or if it's just annoying you, nothing says that has to be there. Now, I realize coming at this direction uh, the other way uh, for the bathroom, because now we're facing from the bed backwards. Uh, I, I didn't really give you a good look at that storage, so let's take a quick peek there. Now, in a lot of Imagines, they have open face storage pockets. Notice how they didn't do that here? That's because this is big, wide door storage. If they tried to leave this wide open, everything would fall out of there constantly. So they put doors where they need to, and they get away with not putting doors on some of the more thin spaces, you know? Uh, I think we've pretty much covered all of the things here uh, from the uh, from the front to the back and the back to the front. Let's take a look at a few more detailed things. Uh, like, first of all, right here, 
blackout roller shades. We've got awesome window coverage here, but blackout roller shades. And again, four seat heat massage theater seating. What's interesting is it is two separate theater seats. It's not one giant super sofa. So if you wanted to pop one of those out and put something else in its place, nothing says you couldn't. The table in this is free floating. If you want to pull it over to the sofa for like Dinofa action, you totally could. Again, the kitchen prep space a little limited, but they packed a lot of storage into a small space on this one. Overall, I think they did that very, very nicely. Uh, back there in the bunk room, again, you've got the one move bunk, get out the way, with some dresser storage below it. A point of either critique or concern or consideration or whatever word you want to apply to it. The bunk room storage is very limited. If you are going to actually sleep a ton of people in here, it does have fairly limited dry storage. That is something that you're going to want to have to kind of consider, work around, and, and find solutions for. Then again, if you're only sleeping like two people or three people, you can always use that extra bunk or two left over to take care of you. Did you notice the motion light over there by the control panel? Speaking of which, we're going to hop over there and take a look at this one in road mode. Now, I've never seen this one with the slides closed. Uh, this is the entry door over here on the right to give you your bearings and your frame of reference. And, I, and I've been looking at this thing going, something's got to give, something's got to give. Like the kitchen's a little janky, okay, but something's got to give. It's the road mode. This is an RV that I feel is definitely intended to be used at a destination. Like you can get to the freezer, but you can't get to the fridge. What's interesting though, is you can get to the bathroom and the sleeping space in transit. Because the bunks are easily directly accessed, I guess either from that rear cargo door, but from the primary door. Like let's not get cute and I'm not gonna try to say, oh, a cargo door counts for travel access. Eh, maybe, maybe, but not ideally. But the two primary doors basically drop you right into your sleeping spaces. And this front one is right there, very close to the vehicle. Hey, if you hear mom, dad, I got a potty and you're going down the road, it does give you a quick little travel stop bathroom access and travel stay over bedroom access. But if you want to try to have breakfast or anything, man, you're going to have to open the slides. No way about it. Now, with the way this one's kind of parked and situated currently, I don't really have the opportunity to give you an awesome broad side, uh, broad side shot of it. I ignore me and my mush mouth. Taking a second look at the weights and the measures there. I think very quickly... We can reason out the uh, the Ford Ranger and the uh, the half ton pickup for this one. I do think you're a solid three quarter ton and up, just based off the weight, uh, the length of this. It, it just you're gonna need a bigger truck if you're gonna haul this one around. But then again, if you don't actually plan on towing it, like if you got a seasonal site and you're just gonna leave it there, give our team a call. We can help uh, arrange RV delivery for you, and then you don't got to worry about it. Now, again, I can't really get you an awesome shot at the nose, but I'm going to kind of cheat that in just a minute. For now, I thought I'd kind of weave my way down this side here. Um, something I didn't think to check earlier. There's one sewer outlet right there in front of the slide, and that is the only one. They made... That is awesome. They managed to cross-plumb everything together so that it all exhausts out one single sewer point. That is fantastic news right there. I was afraid that this was going to have like a front rear two-headed sewage monster, but you don't have to deal with that on this one. And this is what I call why not storage. They just had a pocket. Why not use it? Why, why waste it? You know, that's one of the things that I like about this brand. You see it all over the place in like the kitchen and whatnot. They're just so good about maximizing storage wherever uh, absolutely possible. Now, as long as we're doing things in all kinds of weird order today, let's go ahead and climb up on the roof and use that factory installed roof ladder there, 250 pound rated, by the way, and uh, fully walkable. It is a vented roof to let a lot of that extra heat out, basically meaning more comfortable in the summer sunshine. And we are looking at the optional second air conditioner. Uh, let me ask the question this way. Is there anybody who would not want the optional second air conditioner on this one with this much cubic foot of space, three slides like that, two slides, whatever it is? It's, wow, it is. It's a two slide RV. It feels like a big triple slide. Holy crap. So you got the cargo door on the back here. You saw that motion lighting. That is so, so handy. Like if you pull into a destination, um, and, uh, you know, you, 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 uh, you're trying to see what's going on in there. You got the perfect way to do it. That's a better angle. Uh, I, I mentioned it, but there you can see how each bunk has its own USB plug. Well, its own lighting. The top bunks have USB plugs. The bottom bunks have household, 
Um, I always find it interesting when a manufacturer splits the difference. Here's my two cents. What is your opinion on this? I think USB plugs are more useful in a bunk than household plugs, but that's my two cents based on how my family camps. What is your take and your estimation um, on that one? Now, uh, over here, we've got their uh, XL Mega Griddle Camp Kitchen going on. Very often, I have this little grease shield here flipped up lately here. I've noticed I've, I've never really showcased that in that pocket there is lighting and USB plugs or household plugs. I keep getting the names of all the outlets wrong today. I'm so sorry. But again, that's the big XL Mega Griddle right there. You got Uncle Gary's medicine cabinet, Dad's medicine cabinet for the uh, barley water and, uh, or well, bottled water in the barley pop. You know what? I, I must I must be extremely tired. I just I can't even say my own stupidity. It's just nothing's coming out simple, clean, and easy today. You know something I haven't tried, but it just occurred to me. When you have a door that opens in that orientation right next to a slide out like that, sometimes it can be kind of hard to put the steps away. I want to check. Now, first of all, I apologize in advance for this very unflattering bottom-up camera angle that I'm giving myself right now. It makes my already uh, father figure dad bod look even more Pillsbury dough boy. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm a one-man band. This is what I get. Also, I do my own stunts. All of that aside, though, something not everybody realizes about these table steps. You have to have that door almost totally, totally out of the way to be able to flip these steps up and down. Now, when the slide's closed, that's not so much of an issue, but getting in and out, depending on your order of operations, getting in and out and using the control panel to, to close and open all the slides and everything, it might just not flow naturally for you. Now, there is a uh, app you can get on your phones. You could always Bluetooth it, but I don't always want to have to go digital. I don't always have my phone in my pocket when I'm camping. Sometimes I've just got lazy pants on, you know? They, there's a way around it though. It's not the first time they've skinned a cat, which is really disturbing if you think about it. Because if you just lift this, it's not going to clear. There is a bracket right here that uh, moves out of the way. This latch will catch. Then you can flip that bracket back in place. Now it's locked in place. Now you can close the door and you better make sure that door is out of the way of that big super slide before you go closing the slide. Because if this gets back here behind this slide flange and then you start closing it, that is a rack and pinion slide. It will smash the crap out of that door and you're gonna be due a repair bill. And you Scooby Dooby don't wanna be paying for a screwed up slide and busted door and steps because if you smash your door up and it don't seal right, uh, good luck keeping the rain out. You know, that's not something you wanna deal with. We have Goodyear Endurance Radial standard on these, 87 mile an hour rated American made. Um, these, uh, uh, imagines are also prepped for TPMS. They don't actually include TPMS. Now this is going to strike some people as weird over here on the door side of the RV black tank flush. That's because this is the, the closest location to be able to access the black tank. That means that will be the most effective flush location. It's not what I consider an ideal location, but it is what it is. Now, a last parting thought here. If you're worried about the security in that rear bunkhouse, uh, like you're worried about somebody cracking open that door and grabbing your kids, remember you got this handy little red switch deadbolt right here. So you have the choice between keeping the kids safe or letting them go. <laughs> I, I hope you don't choose that option. Now, um, this is a new model and I'm getting some fairly early access to this. Uh, most of these probably haven't really started getting out to our dealership locations yet. I'll still leave you a link in the video description where you can see if we have any in stock and check the MSRP on those. We unfortunately are not able to publish discounted sale pricing on, uh, on any Grand Design RVs as part of their manufacturer you know, dealership agreement guidelines, but you can see if we have one in stock. And over time, that link will resolve itself. So over time, once we start getting more of these in stock, that'll be right there whether you're serious or whether you're curious it's one click away and i'd like to ch leave you a link for something that's similar but there ain't a whole lot too terribly similar to this one maybe uh, a white hawk 32 qbh that's new i think sport trek might have something in a similar vein but there's not a lot else very much like this so when you're ready we're ready we'd love to work with you take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone mm -hmm.